Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. A uh, couple quick notes before we get into it. Uh, first off, since we've started this new at-night recording thing, uh, this is the first time my wife is out having dinner with friends, so I was in charge of Kid, and Kid is theoretically asleep but there could be a kid walking through at some point okay, okay. just saying so we'll see and uh secondly right before we started i i was scrolling through the the ig as the old people do and i saw shirley manson posted a great meme just a few minutes ago and in honor of our show in general because i think it encapsulates that but in particular many of the upcoming stories we're about to talk about and some of the big stories that we won't be talking about today i should read the quote that she posted don't be the bigger person today. Be the person that helps them understand that sometimes when you fuck around, you find out. <laughs> Good quote. Good quote. Right. And let's roll. All right. Well, I don't know if you would like some eggs with this next story because, of course, the uh, 10,000 steps is back in the news. We have a new study now. Mm -hmm. It says uh, taking 8,600 steps a day will prevent weight gain in adults. While already overweight adults can have their odds of becoming obese by adding an additional 2,400 steps. That's 11,000 for people who can't add. <laughs> According to new research, there's, a, there's some new studies out. It should be pointed out again that the initial number, the 10,000, was a marketing gimmick uh, out of yep. Japan to sell shoes. It never had mm -hmm. any science behind it whatsoever. Nope. Yeah. So, and we've known that, but... Yeah. Every time there's a new study about this, I like to I like to bring it up because it's not saying in the CNN version of, of the study here, male, female, body type, you know, they're just saying 8,600 steps for an adult. Kind of a broad range when it gets down to adult. But. Well, I, I particularly like the, the basically the TLDR on this is walking more is good. Of course. And we've kind yeah. of known so that. So the, the more you walk, the better. Like don't go Forrest Gump, but you know. Yep. Walk. Go for go for a meander, a perambulation, as it were. Yes. Eggs and steps and self-driving cars. Yep. On to self-driving cars. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, this is from a study from the Institu or the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. So right. you know that they have an agenda. People along that there somewhere. look into these sorts of things. Of course, they're going to say uh, <laughs> this, is, this is just great. 42% of Tesla autopilot drivers said that they feel comfortable treating their vehicles as fully self-driving. Now, I would also like to point out real, <laughs> quick, real quick, though, before we even get into this, this is Tesla autopilot. This isn't even fully self-driving. This right. is cruise control. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not cruise control, Jason, because words have meaning. What do they call it? Autopilot. And if you said, if you just... If somebody came up to you that you trusted and believed and maybe possibly worshipped because you're a horrible person that thinks Elon is the next coming of Christ, and he called this thing autopilot, and you didn't bother to read or just wanted to believe, what would you think something called autopilot would do, Jason? Probably autopilot the car. Right. Yeah. Because words have meaning. Well, we know this, and we've been through this ad nauseum. Uh, it's funny, though, that more Cadillac owners actually think that their Super Cruise-assisted cars uh, are ready to go and don't need a driver. Okay? Well, this is because this is the this is the marketing push, and this is why MAGA exists, and this is why so many – if you keep repeating a lie over and over and over again, people will believe it. <laughs> See, somebody's going to pick it up. Somebody's yeah. going to pick it up. It's like yeah. the old days listening to the Top 40 radio. The songs that you hated, if you had to listen to them over and over again, say at work all day, mm -hmm. you finally actually started to like. That's why I like the Spice Girls to this day. In the news. So circling back to the fuck around and find out, Alex Jones has now been ordered to pay $965 million. Yep. This is not the first case that he's had to pay an awful lot of money for, but this is an we've we've moved beyond coffee money. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, this is uh this is protein powder money right here. <laughs> yes, it is. 
So uh, this was a, a new case. A Connecticut jury has awarded nearly a billion dollars in damages to families of the victims and an FBI agent whose lives were further upended by Jones' claims the shooting was a hoax. Um, he was obviously deplatformed from most major social media and podcast platforms many years ago. That did not particularly affect his bottom line. Infowars did just fine not being on the platforms because it was not hard to find for people who had a want to do such things. Uh, so he has continued to make even more money. A forensic economist, which is, uh, you know, I, that is a job I would have liked to have had, had I known it existed when I went to college. I would love to have been a <laughs> forensic econo- economist. That would have been awesome. Testified Jones's net worth could be as high as $270 million, which is a lot less than $965 million that he's supposed to pay up now. Now, See, you would have been any, a good forensic accountant. You can you can do math. Yeah, I, I figure that's less. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, who knows how many how much money anybody's actually ever going to see? There will, of course, be an appeal. Uh, he has multiple shell companies that are shuffling money around left, right, and center. But uh, I think this might be a final nail in his coffin, as it were. At some point, he's just going to be vanquished from the internet because of all this sort of stuff. Some of the people are going to stop hosting his site. So we'll see. We'll see because I don't have uh, – I, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. You think the protein powders might be shying away at this point? Maybe. Maybe. So we'll see. Uh, another fun little uh, fuck around and find out. A lawsuit is accusing meta executives of taking bribes from OnlyFans. This story is just awesome. This is one this of my story, favorites of the week. <laughs> I, I, I have to admit I was a little disappointed because it is a purient headline and I was really kind of hoping that some of the meta executives were like on OnlyFans or something like that. But uh, <laughs> sadly, no, it's it's not quite as juicy, but it's still pretty juicy. We, that, we uh, now know why Sheryl Sandberg was let go because she, was, she had her she OnlyFans She was leaning page. in, baby. <laughs> Oh, uh, anyways, no, this is just, uh, they, they got, uh, it's, it is alleged that they were bribed to basically take only fans ads and not, uh, other adult, uh, entertainment, uh, platforms ads. Uh, and I have to say, if I told you a couple of weeks ago that I see only fans ads all the time on Facebook, but it's for like, I'm improve your, your, your gym practice and your yoga practice by going on to only fans. I was like, if you're naked. Sure. <laughs> I think I think what this also boils down to really is that Facebook was still taking the OnlyFans ad money, but they were secretly deplatforming people who were had big followings on Facebook, so they would have to move to OnlyFans. It was right. kind of like a it was just really nasty. Nasty. Yeah, nasty. there's there's some weird stuff going on there and it's it's not good and it's uh shockingly meta is not put in a good light. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not. I mean, imagine that. Oh, God. Well, I don't know if you remember the story a little bit ago, but uh, Meta was going to try and buy the virtual reality firm Within that makes the game Supernatural for their Oculus system. Right. Um, I haven't played it, but I've heard many great things about it. Some people really, really like it. Um, But, you know, the FTC said, hey, that's kind of like Beat Saber because you're moving your arms around and you're going to sweat. Well... Since they're not technically the same type of game, the FTC had to come back and change their complaint to kind of acknowledge that these are not both fitness apps. One is a game and one is specifically a fitness app. So Meta's like, "Uh, excuse me then, what's your point? So that's really where it's at right now. We don't know how it's going to go, but uh, Meta has filed to let this one through. This will uh, affect the nine people that do not work for Meta and are being forced to wear an Oculus. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, yeah, mine's still sitting in the back. Yeah, gathering dust. Uh, yep, <laughs> yep. And, and it's I not. It's not. It's not virtual Meta dust either. It's real dust. It's real dust. Uh, I particularly like this Metaverse story. Uh, this is amazing. Metaverse Project Decentraland. Uh, I believe we talked about them briefly when they first launched. Uh, it's I'm a sure sandbox environment that allows users to buy and sell virtual real estate. And I'm pretty sure I banged my head up against a wall going, what exactly is this? Ooh, ooh, why are you buying virtual real estate in this platform that nobody cares about? But they're, they're, they were had billions of dollars in valuations because, of course, they did. 
Now, the problem is, uh, according to data aggregator DAP Radar, the Ethereum-based world Decentraland only had, keep in mind, this costs $1.2 billion, or at least it was evaluated at $1.2 billion, had 38 active users over a period of 24 hours. What's the cost of acquisition there? I, I'm not it's that good of a... Uh, <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I've, I've watched Shark Tank. I know that I, I, I'm not a math guy, but I think that that's pretty high. I, I'm not a forensic economist, even though I wish I was, <laughs> but I don't think that sounds good. So uh, nope. they pushed back saying that active users are defined as unique blockchain wallet addresses that interact with its system. As Coindesk explains, that means users who simply log in or chat or interact with other users aren't being counted. Again, if they're not spending money on your platform. Mm -hmm. Oh, keep going. Keep going. It gets better. Okay. Dapperator doesn't track our users. Only people interacting with our contracts. Decentraland's creative director, Sam Hamilton, told Coindesk adding the platform averages around 8,000 users on an average day. 8,000 users on an average day. $1.2 billion metaverse valued at 1.2 billion dollars and the best they can claim is 8,000 users are using it on a day yeah that doesn't Eight. really work out <laughs> no I, i've had sites that have had well over 8,000 users interacting per day and that they were not worth 1.2 billion dollars or certainly i didn't get paid 1.2 billion dollars for them no not at all i mean hell if i had 8,000 followers on twitter or youtube or tiktok or all of them <laughs> i still wouldn't be worth 1.2 billion dollars i don't care how how kardashian i can get now, they attempted to do some more damage control, writing that the platform saw 1,074 users interacting with smart contracts in an entire month. Yeah, and, and guess what? They'll probably get another round of funding. That's just... <laughs> come on. That's the way yep. it's going. Yeah. I, I, I read the, the crypto newsletters, man. It, the, the, the investment is not slowing down. It's, it's crazy. Not, but nobody cares. I don't... It's, it's a massive, like, billionaire fun circle jerk at this point. I mean, if you have that much money, why not go buy real real estate and invite some friends over? I think Come they on. looked at. I, th I think that they, they looked at Jeff Bezos, who bought a yacht that couldn't get down a river because there was a bridge, and they said, oh, "Let's God. stick with the metaverse." Okay. Okay. Anyways, the end quote of this article is great. Anyone telling you that there's a metaverse today that has worked is lying through their teeth," said Sasha Fleischman, portfolio manager, at digital asset investment firm Arca. Okay. <laughs> But well, yeah, we could have told you that too. <laughs> this is all about to change, Jason, because there has uh -oh. been stunning news this week. Breaking news! Very important. As ZZ Top predicted in the 80s, she's got legs. And she knows how to use them. That's right. Meta's avatars are getting legs. <laughs> they're not getting anybody to wear them, but they're going to get them. You get this quote. Meta says, legs have been one of our most requested features on our roadmap. And it has been a significant area of our focus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, thank <laughs> God. They'll be available in Horizon Worlds before Meta opens them up to other developers. They are creating a software development kit for legs. Yep. Problem is you got to buy an NFT on Diptherium or whatever that other metaverse is to wear them. <laughs> and your avatars will be available on Messenger, Instagram, and WhatsApp video calls next year. So put on them pants. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is progress. Legs. We're making progress here. Legs and eggs. <laughs> well, in more Google news or goggle news, not even Google news. We got Google news later, but these uh, the goggles. Microsoft has the project with the U.S. military that mm -hmm. uh, they've been working on for quite some time now. It's yep. uh, it's a very good, lucrative project for Microsoft if they can make it work. A lot of money. You know, yep. Over twenty billion dollars, they could buy ten metaverses for hey, or you know, eighteen metaverses. For if that. you can find a client that'll pay ten thousand dollars for a toilet, you're you're fucking gold. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, in the recent tests, uh, they failed four out of the six evaluation points, and uh, the criticism from the soldiers is this thing will get us killed if we wore it out in the field. Yes, the they were referring to the light generated by the goggles when they're active, which, if you're in the dark, is a problem. <laughs> yeah. Can be seen from hundreds of meters away. <laughs> um, let, 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 let's talk about stealth. You know, we've had night vision goggles for the military for a very long time. They kind of figured that one out. Why can't they do it with these goggles? <laughs> oh, because it's AR. That's right. They have a window on them. Night vision goggles it's, have lenses. Yeah, Maybe they should yeah. fix the window problem. Yeah. Oh, but it's Microsoft. They, they, they've never been able to fix their Windows problem. 
That's not true. It's much better than it used to be. Do you try 11? No, no, nobody's nobody's (laughs) on 11. You're not stupid. The (laughs) army must be. Yes. Uh, We have had an uptick in people sending us information and news and everybody's jumping on the NFT bandwagon. We do appreciate this. Jerry sent this in, just saw this NFT news on Reddit, thought you would get a kick out of it. The NFT purchased by Logan Paul for $623,000 is now worth $10. Yep. Yep, I don't I don't believe things that immediately just pop up on Reddit. So I did a, did a little Googling around, but it seems real. It seems real. Yeah. Seems that Logan posted it himself. <laughs> <laughs> on Which TikTok. Is kind of a humble brag, I suppose. I guess. I guess. I, guess. I can dr- I can drop six hundred and twenty five grand on a JPEG and now I can buy some mm-hmm. fries. <laughs> yeah. JW sent in hi grumpies. You guys are gonna love this. Satoshi Island. People buying real estate on the island wouldn't get traditional land deeds. Instead, they would receive digital non-fungible tokens. The goal is for every aspect of people's lives to be mediated by cryptocurrency. What could possibly go wrong? Here be the link, me hearties, and it's from uh, an Australian news source. Satoshi Island Project aims to turn a remote Pacific island into a city built on cryptocurrency. Uh, I didn't grab anything, any quotes or anything about this, but I did read through it. It was very funny. There was a particular quote that I did love, which is, um, it was like they actually interviewed a real city planner and the city planner was like, it's, they've thought about quite a bit, but I see nothing about waste removal, garbage, food, how things are going to get onto the island. Um, are, 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 are they, they going to buy the same island that Fire Festival was on? Basically, it seems it's, like it. it's Fire Fest, except you can only buy that soggy grilled cheese with crypto. All right, perfect. Yeah. And you only get it in a JPEG. You don't actually get to eat it. That's true. You get a pixelized grilled cheese. Rivian is having a rough week. You think? <laughs> this is the Amazon-backed electric vehicle upstart and long-rumored Tesla killer, once valued, again unbelievably, at $100 billion, has just had to recall nearly every single vehicle it's ever made, which is only 13,000 vehicles. Wait, what's their valuation? $100 billion. <laughs> okay, Those are checking. some fucking expensive trucks. I've seen a couple around town. They're pretty nice. Uh, only in L.A. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they do look pretty nice, except for the fact that there's a potential disrupt steering leading to an increased risk for crashes. In less serious cases, the issue reportedly only leads to excessive noise and vibration to emit from the vehicle's front suspension, which, given the cost tag on these cars, is uh, mm, not so great. But they could cause a separation affecting the driver's ability to control the vehicle and increase the risk of a crash. So, so when your steering wheel pops off... They say it can it can impact your driver the driver's ability to control the car. No shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, not if it's self driving, of course, Jason. Oh, that's right. That's right. right. But it. let's let's run through this bit of math. The recall impacts impacts twelve thousand two hundred and twelve Rivian trucks, SUVs, and a subset of its electric delivery vehicles. To put that in context, CNBC notes that they only shipped fourteen thousand three hundred and seventeen vehicles this year. So may you be a fucking lottery winner there and. Uh, 80% of their entire <laughs> fleet is being recalled, Jason. Has, has anybody looked at the stock price today? How's it doing? Probably I'm went sure up. I'm sure it's not $100 billion. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon, to the moon. To the moon. And uh, in unintended consequences news, the new safety feature that arrived with the iPhone 14 that automatically notifies emergency services after detecting the owner has been in a collision and has featured prominently in many of their commercials recently. Um don't go on a roller coaster with it. Because according to the Wall Street Journal, thrill seekers at Kings Island Amusement Park have triggered the feature six times recently, immediately alerting authorities with a phone call in which a message is repeated seven times and includes the background noise from the user's phone, which is a bunch of people screaming because they're on a roller coaster. <laughs> more, yeah. pro- more troublesome about this is, of course, it alerts friends and family, which has made people think they're dead. Yeah, but this is not new. This is, no. this is uh, you know, this is a tempest in a teapot, I like to say, because when when uh, fall detection came out on the iPhone, they had the same problem. People were getting like or cops were getting called all the time because people were just dropping their watch or whacking it against something because the tech wasn't ready yet. Or same thing whacking. with this. Yeah, more whacking. <laughs> Somebody's being repeatedly stabbed to death or they're churning <laughs> He's falling. He's falling. He's falling. He's falling <laughs> well, they- faster. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's fallen. He looks like he's dead. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, he lit a cigarette. And uh, in actually good news uh, for tech, DeepMind breaks a 50-year math record using, of course, AI because it's DeepMind, um, which is a pretty interesting – it's a pretty interesting read, but it's all about uh, matrix math and matrix multiplication. And mm-hmm. the way that they've figured some of this stuff out is what's fascinating. So they're using um, Alpha Tensor, which is kind of like um, – one of the one of the tools that AlphaGo is all around, you know, you know, all the stuff that they, all the AI tools that they had around creating that monster Go game that taught itself how to play Go and can beat everybody in the world now. Well, right. they're kind of taking that mindset and putting it with uh, some of the math problems that they've got, and now it's figuring out the math problems for them, which is <laughs> genius. That is but genius. when you look at when you look at this over time, it's not a huge change that they're making. Um, but when you talk about the trillions of computations like per second that a computer has to do, it can be a meaningful amount, which means, you know, these things are going to get better and better as they go, especially if they can just teach themselves now. Um, we're still not looking at generalized AI, you know, but we are still looking at something that is a pretty decent uh, technological leap. Well, so well done, uh, Deep Mind. Yeah, good yeah. for them. And good in breaking news, Deep Cake has uh, broken a 50-year record <laughs> from uh, Chef Duff over at Cake Boss. Yes, and Deep Purple is the new AI cover band. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Thanks. I wish I had something funny to follow that up with, but I do not. Nope. <laughs> uh, we got Labor Department proposal that may lead to gig workers gaining employee status. So this has been a new thing that's been pushed through that is finally going to fight back against all these Uber and Lyft bullshit things that have going on. Should the proposal become a formal rule, gig workers such as Uber and Lyft drivers would likely gain benefits and protections afforded to employees if they're reclassified as, oh, I don't know, the employees that they are. All right. These will include minimum wage, overtime, unemployment insurance contributions, and their employee paying a share of Social Security taxes via the New York Times. Under the latest proposal, the Department of Labor plans to implement a test to determine if workers should be classified as employees or contractors. This would include factors as um, how much control workers have over how they carry out tasks, how much bandwidth they have to increase their earnings and offerings and other services would be assessed. Do they own their own equipment? Is their work critical to a company's business? Oh, I don't know. Do you think drivers are critical to Uber and Lyft's business? Pretty much. Pretty much. And I'm pretty sure they own their – mostly they own their own cars or the bank does. Similar. So we'll see if that gets through, but this would be a national law, I suppose, which would overcome all these different uh, efforts that they're doing state by state. So we'll see. Good job. It'd be good. Good job. It'd be good. And NASA's DART spacecraft successfully altered the orbit of an asteroid. The The math is in, Jason. Yes, it and is. The experimental double asteroid redirection test successfully altered the orbit of the asteroid. Uh, by if they they basically said if if we can change the orbital period by seventy three seconds or more we will call it a success and they beat that by more than twenty five times it's thirty two minutes off of its previous orbit so I'm not entirely sure this would stop a a planet killer but uh, we can push some rocks around now well we need bigger rocks we push yeah. the smaller rocks into the bigger rocks using the if little we put the craft. rock himself yes yes perfect there we go finally get the rock in space. Everyone needs a world-class VPN. Grumpy Old Geeks recommends private internet access to protect your online privacy and identity. Private internet access never keeps any records of their users' online activities, so you can be assured that you have complete privacy and nobody knows what you're doing online. No matter your technical skills, private internet access is one of the easiest VPN apps out there. All it takes to connect is just one click or tap and your data will be encrypted instantly. With just one private internet access VPN subscription, you can connect up to 10 devices at the same time. Go to GOG.show slash VPN and sign up today. For a limited time only, you can get our favorite VPN for just $2.69 a month when you sign up for two years. GOG.show slash VPN. That's GOG.show slash VPN.
¿No se merece tu familia lo mejor? Entonces, ¿por qué no los mejores huevos? Ahora, Egglands Best están disponibles en deliciosas opciones. Huevos clásicos de gallina libre de jaula y orgánicos de Egglands, que ofrecen un sabor más delicioso y fresco de granja, que le encantará a tu familia. En comparación con los huevos ordinarios, Egglands Best contiene la mejor nutrición como 6 veces más vitamina D, 10 veces más vitamina E y el doble de omega 3 y B12. Solo Egglands Best. Mejor sabor, mejor nutrición, mejores huevos. Visita egglandsbest.com para más información. Media Candy. In the Rock and Space sounds like a great new show for Netflix's new ad system that they're rolling out. I think that that would be a, a fine show. Uh, it's coming November 3rd, and it's going to be about seven bucks, six ninety nine to be precise. Uh, mm -hmm. Up to five minutes of ads per hour. Uh, you only get 720p, though, which is That's interesting, and you can't download it. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the big rub here, which most people seem to be ignoring, but this article did point out, is that there will be slightly fewer movies and TV shows than the pricier tiers. They haven't announced what won't be available. Is it going to be the big stuff? Is it going to be the premiere stuff? Is it going to be Stranger Things? Or is it going to be like the crappy Ryan Reynolds comedy that came out 10 years ago? They're they're being cagey about that right now. Yeah, because I think they're trying to – I'm sure they're scrambling right now to try and get all of the deals in place to make it happen with as oh, few yes. – as, you know, as few missing titles as possible. It's, this so. is going to be a legal and financial clusterfuck of epic proportions. But Not if uh, you're the lawyers. Good luck. No, oh, God, the lawyers are making out like bandits right now. <laughs> oh, they're so happy right now. Crazy. Yep. Well, Apple's going to do the same. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they're, they're uh, going around the scenes around town now trying to do deals. Uh, but nobody's really talking yet. But, you know, some people are leaking out that they're in discussions So I expect a little bit of news on that coming soon, but they're probably going to put ads into their Apple TV Plus, which nobody can find. So that's <laughs> where it's at. They just don't have a breakthrough show yet. I, I, Ted Lasso, everybody Ted Lasso. loves. Well, but again, you know, people, that, that that's limited appeal, really. It's, it's, it was a great show. People do love it, but it doesn't need a lot of people. Like it's Apple's, only got one season left, so it's only got one season left. A foundation ain't doing it for anybody. Um, mm -hmm. the, the big the big one that they did with Jennifer Aniston and all that, which was I mean, there was no more perfectly tailored show for my wife. And my wife watched the first season then just kind of went. Meh. So they don't have a <laughs> good show yet. Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, what the morning show. Mm -hmm. uh, I do like I, I am liking for all mankind, though. I got to say yeah, they I, haven't I gotten to the end yet. It. <laughs> it's I, I like it. I, I haven't I haven't even finished the first season. It's kind of a slow burn for me. Whenever I think about it, I'll go pop one on because there's so much else to watch right now. That's the thing. There's so much else to watch. Yep. Uh, speaking of that, October 21st, we finally get the peripheral coming to Apple Prime or not Apple Prime. <laughs> Talk about universe creep now coming yep. to Amazon Prime Video. Uh, it's the same cast for or not the same cast, but the same showrunners from Westworld. So that'll be interesting to see yeah. how they pull that one off. I watched the trailer and it dawned on me that we both reviewed that book on the show. We did. And I remember nothing from the book that is in that trailer. Me I don't either. even remember what the book was about. I'm not entirely sure that it could have anything to do with the book. I mean, foundation is not foundation. True. So <laughs> That's true. <laughs> at all. Like it, they use the name. And they use the characters' names, but it's not foundation. So, uh, yeah, I don't really remember the peripheral. I know I read it, or Count Zero. Um, I know I read it, but couldn't tell you anything. I, I watched the trailer. It looked okay. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. And this isn't based on Count Zero. This is based on that book, oh, The Peripheral. Yeah, The Peripheral. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Sorry, they all I'm blend together, it. like I said. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they, they really kind of do. Uh, some news about the serial podcast, the charges have been dropped. So that's a bit of an update because last time we talked about it, he was released and now he's a free man forever. That's it. And, uh, no, no word on what's going to happen next in terms of the actual case itself. Apparently there are some people of, of interest to the police, but, uh, mm -hmm. I guess we'll have to find out if there's a breakthrough podcast about it. If we ever hear about it again. So. Yep. I wonder if he's going to actually sue the makers of cereal to get some of the money back so he can have some. <laughs> I don't know. Would that be a good move to sue? I mean, to some degree, cereal is the reason he is a free man these days. Sort of. It took yeah, a but he's got to eat. But 
He's got to eat. That's true. Uh, we finished the session. All right. Amazing. I, I, okay. It's one of those shows that I find very difficult to watch, but it's very worth it. So really enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next season. New season's coming soon. Well, if you if you don't want to wait right now, you can watch The Murdochs, Empire of Influence on CNN. It's a seven or eight part series um, mm-hmm. where I think number four is out right now, which I'm going to try and finish tonight after I watch She-Hulk. Uh, it's a really good uh, behind the scenes of The Murdochs. And uh, it is eerily exactly like Succession. <laughs> well, shocking. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very surprising there. Uh, Werewolf by Night is out. Uh, it is yet another entry in the Marvel extended universe, I suppose, but it has nothing to do with anything Marvel and very uh, genre specific, very noir. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, it's 50 some odd minutes and I was captivated by it. I thought it was clever. I thought uh, I, I enjoyed the experimentation, although, you know, <laughs> You and I experimented a lot, like in the early days of the internet, when we first got like you know Adobe Premiere version one point oh, and like put filters on things. Their yeah. attempt at doing like an old school filter, it was just like ridiculous. I was like, you guys could have made this look a little better than that, right? But uh-huh. I'm guessing it was done by kids that never saw like old school movies. Probably, probably. Yeah. But it was very enjoyable. I, I, you should watch it, Jason. I think you'd like it. Okay. I'll I'll add it to the ever-growing queue. Yes, exactly. And speaking of the ever-growing queue, Somebody Feed Phil Season 6 is dropping in a week, October, or five days from now, October 18th. I better hurry up and finish Season (laughs) 4, because I think that's where I'm at. Uh, I can't wait. I think, you know, a season now means like four or five episodes, but it's better than nothing. And my cue is basically pause right now because I'm in sports Rama world, Jason. I've got postseason baseball going on. Go Dodgers. I've got the UEFA Champions League. And basically, we're going right into the Winter World Cup. So I, I don't I think I'm done. It's just going to be all sports from now on until the end of the year. OK, well, you, you have to at least for the next episode, you have to finish She-Hulk and Andor so we can go over those. OK, we'll do that. <laughs> all right. And I got this funny story from a uh, friend of the show, Bob Fogarty. Shane McGowan waved his willy at trains passing by when he lived at Bono's house. <laughs> I, I saw this in the news, too. I'm surprised you it made it into the show, but it is funny. I'm a Shane McGowan fan. Come on. It's funny. You know, I think it would be uh, more funny if he waved his willy at Bono. Yeah. Well, I, he was trying to get people to think he was Bono, which I think was even better. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, with or without my willy. Ups and doodads. I saw this come through my inbox today from Eero that they were mm-hmm. raising my rates on something, on, on the Eero security package. And um, buried in there was a link to their new internet backup solution that will be available soon. And um, I like this. I like this. This will let you actually use, uh, I think, the Eero Pro 6s, which is what I have, um, and set up a, a basically a phone connection or like a Wi-Fi hotspot that will automatically mm-hmm. kick in if your main internet connection goes out. Yeah, I found this fascinating today as I was reading the new or was reading this email on my phone because my internet was out. And I'm like, man, I would love to put my 5G <laughs> phone into my Eero and be able to get my work done right now instead of sitting here unplugging it and plugging it back in, screaming yeah, at this the Spectrum. Is, um, this has traditionally been like a, a business package, usually option for for most. Uh, uh, Wi-Fi setups and, and things of that nature. Like we have that at our work. So if it goes down, it goes automatically to a Rogers, you know, you can do this sort of thing. So it's nice that they're offering this for home networks, but uh, it's not it's not part of the free package. You do have to pay for the year a month mm-hmm. to get that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the bandwidth on your, you know, your other connection. So yeah, of course. Yeah. But it's just, it's nice that it'll be, I'll be able to use it on the one that I've got, you know. Yeah. I'm happy about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a good addition. I I would argue it should be a free addition to the era mm-hmm. setup, but you know, it's not going to be. Nothing's free anymore, Brian. <laughs> no, especially and features. Then, especially features. We got a whole bunch of people writing in about this uh, news about putting air tags in luggage, which I have successfully done once, but apparently the gig is up. Jason Lufthansa is banning air tags in luggage after passengers publicly shame it with locations of lost bags. Uh, we got this from Vincent. We got this from Barrett. We got this from a couple other people as well. So yeah, uh, it was it was a great idea. It remains a great idea. 
But uh, the airlines are pissed off about this because we're basically calling them on their bullshit and uh, posting about it and saying, uh, how can you say my luggage is lost? I know exactly where it is. Or why are you saying my luggage was on the plane? I know it's back at the airport I just left. Well, here's the thing. They said that they said that it was because of the Bluetooth signals were interfering with planes communications, yes. which we all know was a lie. Well, yes. uh, but those, Lufthansa those has, laws are still on the books. Uh, well, Lufthansa has now uh, taken it back. OK. Thanks to the They're public shaming. And they, they, they talked to the German aviation authorities and they confirmed that there is nothing wrong with it. So get back to it. And Lufthansa, try and figure your shit out and find out where the bags are. So we're still good to go because the uh, the FAA here in the States has already cleared it. So good. I think they were I think Lufthansa was just trying to say, is there a way that we can make them not use these things? Well, turns out no. Excellent. It's a, it's a it's basically the perfect use for an air tag. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I just had to buy a bunch of batteries. All of mine are dying this week. All those oh. first gen air tags I got. OK, I got battery notifications from all of them. <laughs> I will say, though, that there is cheap uh, – you can get cheap replacement batteries by the 12-pack on Amazon. So they're like super cheap. Highly oh, that's recommend good. that one. Excellent. Yeah, Because um, they used to be expensive. They're, they're pretty cheap now. Uh, so this comes through my email today too. Uh, in DJI Mavic 3 news, their, their insane team climbed to the top of Everest and mm-hmm. flew their drone. They okay. got it up to 30,289 feet, which is <laughs> crazy. An off-the-shelf commercial drone that only costs, you know, less than a thousand bucks or around a thousand bucks will fly that high in that temperature, you know, with with um, atmosphere that, that that's that thin. That's crazy. Right. So um, I know it's a, a publicity stunt, but uh, I definitely it's think it'll cool also. One. Yeah, I think they'll get a lot of good data out of it too to actually make the you know make the drones better. Because what would be cool is. If you can sit on the ground and fly it up 30,000 feet to the top of Everest, take some pictures and fly it back down so you don't have to climb all the way up, that would be Yeah, a, I'm sure the FAA is going to be cool with that. It's Nepal in China. There is no- But I'm just saying the ability <laughs> for the drones to go that high in general. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We can make them yourself and do that, I guess, right now. <laughs> yeah, if you're a terrorist. Or a hobbyist. Just uh-huh. being a hobbyist yeah. with yes. a thirty thousand foot drone. I'm a hobbyist that likes to light my shoes on fire, Jason. God. That's my hobby. Uh, one of Google's hobbies, Project Starline, is starting to get rolled out. And I, I looked at this. I watched the video. It's basically what they call a three D, you know, video conferencing booth. It does mm-hmm. it has some cool tech. It does like on the fly three D modeling of your face, and so you can. But do they do legs? If you stand up, I guess. <laughs> Nobody stood up in the demo, so I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, maybe they don't have legs. <laughs> maybe there's no legs yet. Um, and I think it'd be great for prison visits, for starters. You know, you don't have to go all the way to the the penitentiary. Yeah. What What better way to show show how much you love the person in in the in the joint than you know do a VR visit instead? Yeah, by staying home. <laughs> That's it. I've got a virtual shiv in this virtual <laughs> cake. Seriously, porn. Obviously, if they can find the legs. But, uh, you know, I, it is good tech and it is great use for all those 3D TVs that somebody's got sitting in a warehouse because it uses those to actually give you the 3D effect. OK. But I, I feel like you could fake it with just, you know, high res cameras in rooms that look identical because they kind of did that in their video. The rooms mm-hmm. that they're in are like exactly mirrors of the other rooms, which gives you the sense that you're just looking through a mirror at somebody or I mean a glass window through somebody. And – you know, I think that you could get almost 90 percent of that effect with just some camera, like regular cameras. You don't need all the 3D stuff. But it's a, you know, it's kind of cool. It comes down to the price point. But and if they can do more than like one or two people, because the rooms are really small. So there may be some technical limitations, but it's kind of neat. We'll see how, right. how it plays out. OK. You know, I, look, I'm, in, I'm I'm down with them trying something neat. Hey, as long, I, if, I, as, long I, as I can buy an NFT of the session when I'm done. If I had to, to do my- a virtual <laughs> meeting uh, online, I would rather do it with this than go into the metaverse. I'll tell you that. Absolutely. No headphone, no headsets or headphones required. Yes. Uh, um, Google is rolling out some of their uh, their apps, some updates to their apps to work with the widgets on iOS 16, which makes me very happy. <laughs> I want maps and I want uh, the Google Assistant on my lock screen. 
So I'm I'm looking forward to that because I, I mean I, Apple really needs to get rid of this you know Siri as a default voice assistant. They need to have an open voice assistant API. Pretty please with sugar on I, top. I would love that because I, I'm in a dual household where it's Amazon and Apple, and I would love to have Alexa on my phone as a default. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without having yep. to go through the hoops that you have to get through. I I just don't like Siri. I don't have Apple uh, around the house devices. They're all Amazon. But I have Apple everything else. So if I could actually just opt out of Siri and switch that over to Amazon and be able to interact with all my other devices directly, that would be unbelievably cool. Yep. And handy. And yep. handy. So get on it, Apple. I know you listen. <laughs> uh, Spark Mail, my favorite email app, has come out with version 3.0. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, and now it's got a subscription. Of course. 60 bucks a year for all of your devices, but um, which isn't bad. I mean, I've used them for so long that I really feel like I owe them at least a year's worth of, <laughs> of premium support because uh, it is a great mail app. Now, this 3.0 version is funky. It is I'm, – I'm finding a hard time getting used to it, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. It is a – right. it's, it's crazy. It's a crazy mail app. Um but I'm I'm getting the hang of it. I'm getting the hang of it. I, I first put it on my phone and I turned off all the new features because I'm like, this is – what the hell is this? But now that I have it on my uh, – on my Macs too, I have to get the hang of it. So it's uh, it's interesting. I would say don't get it if you don't have at least an hour or two to spend figuring out how the damn thing works. Apple Mail is fine for me and uh, oh, I've got to deal no. with Outlook for work. So there you go. Oh God, I feel I feel for your pain. Mm-hmm. Security? Ha! Welcome back to Security Ha with Dave Bittner. Dave is the host of the Cyberwire podcast, co-host of the social engineering podcast Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan. Dave is also the co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen, where they discuss law and policy and surveillance and privacy, and the new Control Loop, where they discuss ICS and OT. Hello, Dave. Hello, gentlemen. It's good to be back. Hello. So, what's the skinny? Andor, yes or no? <laughs> so, uh, I am I am slowly but surely getting caught up. I am three episodes in now, I, uh, and as we record this, I think there are six episodes that are out there. So I, I was uh, speaking to Jason a little bit earlier about how my time is 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 been taken up by various sports things Uh, that should not be your excuse as a baltimore orioles fan your october should be pretty free (laughs) in general that's true well uh i don't know if you've noticed in the years that we've done this show together but i'm not really a sports ball guy (laughs) uh (laughs) so uh that that is not what gets in my way i it's just uh, there are other shows that i'm catching up on right now As as i think i mentioned uh i'm watching the boys I just uh, started season two of that, um, and uh, so it's just been hard to squeeze stuff in. It's also it's just a busy time of year for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, so, but I'll, I'll get there, and I'm enjoying it. I think it's quite good. Uh, it feels like Star Wars, which to mm-hmm. me is probably the most important thing. Um, I, I also, I I really like the soundtrack. Yeah, it's good. I, I like that a lot as well. Which I know is something when uh, we first – when we all first started watching Mandalorian, we were a little skeptical as to whether or not we enjoyed the, the music. But I think this one's really good. So that, that helps as well. Yeah, it doesn't have that Star Wars uh, Western feel to it like the Mandalorian tended to. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, three episodes in. Uh, seems like things are getting good. <laughs> things are starting to happen. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so my whole family's enjoying it. Good. You guys better catch up quick to avoid spoilers because they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. Speaking of I that, uh, I, I just have to rant really quickly. This, uh, you know, the, the streaming media shows they drop at midnight, right? So so Amazon Prime dropped the the is I think it's the last episode, if not the penultimate episode of the. Uh, uh, was it whatever the whatever the Lord of the Rings show Rings is of called. Power. Rings of Power. So that mm. dropped at midnight last night. Uh in the morning I, I open up my Apple News app and just kind of scan through headlines and all that. And you know, they put in a picture with a headline. And uh, you know, the sh- the show has been out, I guess, technically for twelve hours, although we are sleeping during those periods of time, and it is first thing in the morning. And one of the headlines for the, in my Apple News app is and they show a big picture of the actor and they say actor ha- 
had no idea he would be cast as Sauron. <laughs> okay. And he would turn into Sauron. So now I know who the fuck Sauron's going to be, which is the big point of this fucking episode. So thanks, don't, news. Don't have to watch that one now. <laughs> yep. I'm curious in general, uh, since you have both lived on the West Coast, um, is it harder to avoid spoilers as a West Coaster than an East Coaster? It definitely was when Facebook was a very big deal, right? Like mm. when everybody was on Facebook and I had a bunch of East Coast friends, I remember for Game of Thrones or things like that, it would be like I would just have to put my phone away until I watched <laughs> the episode because right. all my East Coast friends would be posting about it, right? So um, yeah, it's There's easier always that one friend now. who's like, <laughs> I can't believe so-and-so died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's it's a lot easier on the East Coast, but it's also a lot easier now that, you know, Facebook is nobody's on it. And, and even if my friends did post, I would just see ads for shit that I don't care about, not their posts mm -hmm. anyways. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've curated my feed to get rid of anybody that's ever posted a spoiler. It's, that's a defriending <laughs> nice, event. Nice. <laughs> you know, I, I, you I are made swift no and bones heartless about that. Oh, yes. Culling. <laughs> oh, yes. You post a spoiler, you are dead to me. Dead right. to me. <laughs> Same with any news outlet that does pulls that crap with the, uh, like, like you had, Brian, you know, they're yeah. cold forever. Uh -uh. I mean, you know, I get it. I get we're in, in clickbait world now and all news is clickbait news and even CNN is clickbait news. But Come on, people. The episode dropped at midnight last night. It was seven in the morning. And I now that entire episode has been spoiled for me. That's great. Awesome. Fun times. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit of uh, interesting follow up on the uh, you guys remember the R plate? I do. Yes. Uh, yes. It seemed cute and interesting. And then I went, huh, yeah, now I have to subscribe for my license plate. <laughs> Well, yeah, and it, it was $800 before. They've changed the pricing on it now, but it is uh, now street legal in California. Mm -hmm. So I can actually go out and buy one if I wanted to. But yeah, the mm -hmm. uh, the pricing is a little pricey. You got to pay 20 bucks a month for 48 months. No. <laughs> right. Unless that, you know, unless that covered the the um, the cost of my registration, which it doesn't. By the way, that's the that's for the battery powered version in which you will have to replace batteries. Uh, uh, and I'd imagine you would get a ticket if you did not notice your battery ran out and your license plate was no longer working. It is twenty four ninety five per month for the hardwired version. <laughs> I'm just thinking now we're 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 in an era of firmware updates for license plates. Yeah, we oh, are, and, and, we are, and EULAs. Yeah, yeah. I got I, I need a EULA for my license plate, but it's e ink, so I'm guessing if the battery goes out, it's just going to stay. You know, like mm. a Kindle will stay when the battery is dead. Mm. It can lock on a lock on a page. Right. But mm -hmm. um, the thing, the interesting thing that I thought was the uh, the extra use cases for it uh, that they listed in this article: uh, paying for tolls and parking. I'm that's not smart. Sure. Uh, that's yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, identifying cars as legal for travel in HOV lanes. Okay. okay. If only Did there that. were stickers for that now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or windows that cops could look in. You know, mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if we've solved that window problem. Uh, replacing special hashtags and license plates for people with disabilities. Hang tags. Hang tags, not hashtags. Yeah, yeah not hashtags. <laughs> I've been in tech news hell all morning. Hashtags is everywhere <laughs> right, for right. me. No, that would add, that's actually a good one. Yeah. These are solutions in search of a problem. Uh, right. These, yeah. are, these have all been dealt with already in a way that is not particularly onerous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, but I like this one, indicating that a car is in autonomous mode, which is the one I was going to get to, which... For me, that's perfect because then I know to stay the hell away from that one. I would actually basically just say it would be a self-selecting sample. If I saw a car that I knew had an autonomous mode and it had one of these fucking plates on it, I'd assume that would be on. <laughs> You'd assume it was in it, yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't you think that it's going to be the the Tesla drivers, the, the Rivian drivers are going to be the first ones who are going to be all over this? Well, not the Rivian drivers because all their trucks have been recalled. <laughs> exactly. They can't get to their license plates. Oh, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, good callback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first one that I saw was on a Tesla, though. I, I have a picture of it. Oh, so you've uh, seen one of these? Okay. Oh yeah, I've seen them in the wild. They've they've been around my neighborhood for a while now because they've been out no. and test here. So, okay. but of course, uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was a Tesla that had the first one. Of course. Yeah. I've yet to see one out here. Yeah. 
Because you guys are probably rational people as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next one I, I immediately, you know, triggers our, our standard catchphrase, what could possibly go wrong? Displaying a QR code that could work with an app for keyless entry. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's going to go great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, the thing is, they say that, uh, you know, all the things that you can put on there are have to be approved by the DMV, and they go into a special list of approved sayings. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> How long is that going to last? Yeah. Come right. On. Hackers start your engines. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And how many people are just going to take a Kindle and strap it to the back and just pretend it's that? (laughs) Right. The the poor man's R plate. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. What keeps somebody from taking just a a slab of e-ink and putting it back there with a Raspberry Pi and making it say whatever it it needs to say? I guess I I think Brian nailed it. This is a solution in search of a problem. I don't understand. I don't understand what this is for, really. Douchebags. For people with too much money. (laughs) That's I it. guess. I mean, they say that that this oh, this will keep you from having to put stickers on your on your license plate and stuff like that. I mean, I think those should Not be a hard gone problem. anyway. No, but also the like law enforcement, they all have license plate scanners now. Yeah, you don't they're need automated. That. They're they're not run. You know, they're not. I mean, yes, I suppose they're looking for an up to date sticker on your tag if they want a reason to pull you over, but. The cars are equipped with scanners now. That, that happens automatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's a, this no. is a silly product made by silly mm-hmm. people. Yeah. Bought yeah. by even sillier people. Well, speaking <laughs> of that, let's talk about... It's a uh, silly product. <laughs> yeah, here's another silly product for you. Uh, Apple's new AR headset or mixed reality yeah. headset. Uh, some news came out that is kind of interesting. Um, this is from uh, some people who actually worked on it. They say that mm-hmm. they're actually going to have iris scanning built into the headset. So when you huh. when you put the headset on, it will automatically log you in because it knows who you are. And then you can have, you know, different people use the same headset with different profiles. I'm like, right. okay, they can do this for a headset, but they can't do it for a damn iPad? Come on. Hmm. Seriously. I want I want multiple accounts on an iPad. Please. Oh, I see where you're going with yeah, this. Yeah, the multiple so accounts want... thing is is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, the iris scanning for a headset, that... that you know that makes sense to me. Like, why? It's, cool. yeah, it's it's right there, anyways. That's cool. I get it. But uh, yeah, let's roll out those multiple accounts on iPads because I'm I share my iPad with my kid, and I would like him not to be able to access the apps that I have access to, and I'd rather not see the seven thousand game apps on my screen when I log in. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. I saw a, a a different story about. Um, I guess it was um, Meta's new headset mm-hmm. and how many uh, scanners it has that track your face movement mm-hmm. and that there's privacy concerns about that. Right. Oh, God. Well, well I mean, I figure thing, nobody's going to use strapping, it, so who cares? <laughs> if you're strapping right. that thing to your face, I think you've it's game on at that point. Like, you know, <laughs> okay, yeah, it's going to track your head movements. Yeah, you're wearing it on your head. Mm-hmm. So, What do you guys think of this in general? Like, <laughs> I, I, I have no interest in any uh, sort of me- uh, virtual thing from Facebook no, nope. but I think I might be. I certainly will check out something like this from Apple. Um, presumably, it would be. It wouldn't look stupid because it's <laughs> Apple. But but who knows? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I've got those those bra headphones. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Right. <laughs> but I I can see a use case for this where it could be helpful when you're out and about doing things and so on and so forth. But it, for AR instead of VR. But I, like, mm-hmm. what do you guys think of this? Is is it? Are you intrigued? I'm not being a gamer and gaming is the only thing that I think I would be interested in VR for in anyways. Uh, so that's out for me. I, I, I like the idea of AR. I don't think I, I guess that if they just look like ski goggles and they didn't look totally douchey, I would try it. Uh, I mm-hmm. guess. I don't know. AR is cool. I like AR, but I also like the idea of just being able to hold up my phone and not walk around wearing something that makes me you know, the Google Glass effect. I, I think that's going to be hard to shake where, you know, as, as soon as somebody showed up with Google Glasses, everybody went, God, what an asshole. Yeah. Uh, what, what was it called? Um, glass holes. Glass holes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Glass yeah. holes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So now you'll be an app hole. Uh, <laughs> I, the, only, the only thing that gets me is that, you know, everybody's saying that they're going to cost around three grand. That, which is oh. insane. But I mean, everything, yeah. well, not, not so much anymore because things are certainly... 
things have certainly changed in terms of pricing for electronics. But I mean, we're all of an age where when as, as soon as a new tech was announced, it was, it was exorbitantly priced. And within five or six years, when people actually started to adopt and use them, they were reasonable. But then again, phones are creeping up to three grand. So, I was going to say, true. you know, if, if, and if this thing requires a phone, you know, you're looking at a five five thousand dollar outlay by the time you're done with tax and shipping. Yeah, right. I so. suspect that the the heavy lifting is going to be done on the phone uh, from a processing point of view. So that yeah. makes sense to me. Um, I did see an ad today for uh, a product called Nreal Air AR glasses, mm -hmm. which was on Amazon, and they look just like uh, regular glasses. Uh, here, I'll put a. I'll uh, just put this in here so you guys can see it real quick. Uh, and they're only three hundred and seventy nine dollars or so. And um, I, I was impressed just with they don't yeah, look I mean, stupid, and they, don't they look, look like they could work. And who knows what you know? I haven't seen a review, I haven't seen a demo or anything like that. But if this is the direction we're headed, and to see a product like this available to buy for under $400. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not offensive looking. This is something, no. this is something I would consider wearing for sure. Yeah. If they did anything, that's the real trick. I mean, are <laughs> well, they actually any good? <laughs> so. Probably not, but uh, yeah. Is it just a display that you can see through? Yeah. Yeah. So there at, uh, the rating is uh, due to 3.5 or 3.7 out of five out of 26 mm -hmm. ratings. So not really a hot seller at this point. Also but, not right. available in Canada. I cannot get them shipped here. Maybe we could work something out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beat you at the border, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that heavily guarded Canadian border. <laughs> I'll bring the I'll bring the VR glasses. I'll bring, bring the poutine. Some... <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I was gonna say maple syrup, but that works too. And a friendly beaver. <laughs> Well, that's a different story altogether. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brian Schumeister, and this is my friendly beaver. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Uh, okay, moving on. Moving on. Please, um, please. Yeah, I'm going to try and save you on that one, Dave. Uh, so <laughs> apparently Papa John's uh, has been snooping on their website visitors, and uh, there is now a lawsuit coming against them for that. Um, they used some cookie rewind crap on the website so they could – or session rewind so they could watch everything that you do and then go back and, and rewatch it later and you know kind of do customer analysis on it. Well, okay. apparently some people are not very happy about that. Some people have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah. Well – I mean does, does it really bother does – it, does it bother you, Jason, the idea that a website would be able to analyze the clicking that you did on it, which they can actually do anyways – this is just you can do a, that from the log files. You know, exactly. The I was part. about to say that this just makes it somewhat easier for you. You, you need less uh, less educated IT folk to be able to do the tracking and, and come up with the analytics here. Uh, doesn't really bother me too much, but you know, Papa John's definitely has an image problem, so this isn't the best thing right now. But, the one yeah. thing that bothers me with this sort of thing is um, when they record things that you type in that you did not – Enter. Right. 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 So you put something in a text field, but you don't enter it, and they record that anyway. To right. me, so that's... when you're typing in pepper row, um, I want mushrooms instead, then they can start to target you with more pepperoni ads. Yeah. To up yeah. Your... Well, I mean, that's a good <laughs> point, too, is that w what information are they getting from you at, on a Papa John's website? I think Dave but... is more saying, how do I launder all the money? Oh, shit. This is the wrong window. I was ordering a pizza. Right. <laughs> right exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> How, how, how do I hide a dead body? Oh, no, no, no. Large cheese. Large cheese. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that stuff's, that stuff's creepy. And we know that, you know, Facebook has been doing that for years. We mm -hmm. talked about that probably, you know, six years ago. Well, I, I mean, I remember there were like, you know, uh, all the tracking, mouse tracking on websites and where the mouse went and all that stuff was being recorded. I just assume that stuff happens on most websites at this point. So I'm not particularly bothered by it. But yeah, I agree. Like the one thing that is kind of a mm -hmm, is what Dave mentioned. But anything else, I think, who, who gives a shit? Yep. Yeah, I guess so. Whatever. I, just, I think this is. I think this is one of those ridiculous lawsuits personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, I put a quick little thing in here. I saw a note come by from our own Maryland attorney general to uh, 
beware of cars that may have come from the Florida hurricane uh, Ian floodplains. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so whenever mm-hmm. something like this happens, there's a bunch of cars that are damaged and they get totaled. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, people buy them up at auction and they scrub the history of them and then they send them around the country to sell them to poor unsuspecting people. Um, mm. So just a heads up because the, the used car market is still a little wacky right now. So yeah. people are trying to gobble up whatever they can and this will, you know, <laughs> literally flood the market with uh, oh. a bunch of cars. So um, it's, a, it's a nice little document with things to look out for. Uh, beyond just a musty smell in inside the car, <laughs> in a dead alligator in the in the glove box, right, <laughs> right, exactly. I pretty much have a don't buy anything from Florida blanket policy. Uh huh. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more lightsabers yeah. for you. I guess not. I can get the ones in Anaheim. Yeah, there you go. Um, so finally, unrelated to anything security related, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, uh, this week and I thought I would share some thoughts with, uh, you fine gentlemen and our poor unsuspecting audience. (laughs) Um, I don't know why I was thinking about patter songs, which are songs like trouble from the music man. Mm -hmm. And I am the very model of a modern major general from pirates of Penzance. Mm -hmm. So a patter song, um, is a song where the lyrics are spoken but patter songs are very fast, which yes. is what trouble is. And, you know, modern yeah. major general, they're, they're very fast. And so part of what you're impressed by is the speed at which the person can perform the song. Um, but that got me thinking about spoken word songs, which is other than the entire genre of rap. Uh, I was going to say this is white is... people rap here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was going to ask that question because that did cross my mind is that can, would you consider these songs to be rap? But I guess that's the same thing as saying, would you consider a country music song to be a rock and roll song? They're, they're just different genres. So mm-hmm. they're speaking, but it's not rap. Um, in fact, this, these uh, things tend towards country. This, uh, so, uh, unfortunately, um, just leads directly to my least favorite band in the history of the entire known universe and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Ah, ah yes. yes. Give it away, Which give it away, all give it away. Just... <laughs> give me my Grammy, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, so a couple songs I was thinking about here. Of course, uh, Big John by Jimmy Dean. You guys know that one? Sausage Guy? Big Bad John. Big yep, I know John. that song. Yep. That's a great song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that song went to number one on the charts back in the 60s. And I was thinking, has there ever been a more sparse number one song? Because other than Jimmy Dean talking, there are a set of bongos, a bass player. There's a hammer sound like a like a hammer, like somebody, you know, I've been working on the railroad kind of clink clanging sound Mm -hmm. and the backup singers. That's it. There's there's basically no band on this. Right. Um, Good song, though. Gets stuck in your head. And then that led me to the song Ringo by Lauren Green. Do you guys know this one? I do. Yes. All right. <laughs> Jason, you don't know Ringo? Not off the top of my head, no. Okay. Well, it's uh it's kind of a story of um uh two uh cowboys out in the west and <laughs> Well, it uh, is Lauren Green. Yeah, it's Lauren yeah, Green. It wasn't going it to actually... be two Cylons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the... I believe this is off of his Ponderosa album, which has uh, – it's all these sorts of songs. But you know, it's like, uh, you know, I went east and he went west. It's that sort of a thing. <laughs> uh, the two two guys who – they save each other's lives and blah, 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 blah. But anyway. Oh, man. I want, I want a deep fake, a Lauren Green country album that is all about Battlestar Galactica now. <laughs> <laughs> that, would that would be great. great. <laughs> we can fake his voice. So, we have the technology. Yeah. Why not? That led me to a song called Teddy Bear by Red Sovine, who I was not familiar with before I heard this song. Uh, Evidently, he was riding the 1970s wave of CB radio uh, songs. Great time Um, to be alive. Yeah. This may be a contender for the worst heart-rending saccharine sweet song, Stealing the Record from that Horrible Christmas Shoes song. Um. This is the story of a poor crippled boy, and that's what they call him in the song, a poor crippled boy whose father recently died. His father was a trucker, and he died trying to make his way through a blinding snowstorm. And so the little boy takes to his father's CB radio and his loneliness and reaches out to the truckers. And 
as you're listening to it, kind of like Christmas shoes, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for this boy. <laughs> I, uh, I have in vivid a- memories of hearing that off the radio as a kid driving in the back, uh, sitting in the back seat of the car on long road trips with my parents. Love it. Is that right? Okay. Yes, I, I, mm-hmm. I was, I was not familiar with this song, but it is <laughs> awesome in its awfulness. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, that reminded me of the classic uh, Convoy by C.W. McCall, another which was another movie. number one song. They made a movie out of it even. Uh, to this day, I know all the lyrics to that song because I, <laughs> I had the 45 and I think I probably wore it out. Same um, here. Same here. Did you have the board game though? Oh, no, I did not. I did the Convoy know, board game was, was fantastic. One. Had a little Christmas plastic bear in the itself. air. It was awesome. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Check eBay for that. Yeah. Worth noting that C.W. McCall was not actually a real person. Uh, He was an ad man who decided to jump on the CB radio bandwagon with this song and made a good song. Got to say. Got a lot. I I like it. So anyway, that's a little uh, side trip I went down with uh, spoken word songs. We'll have the links to all these in the show notes and – Curious if our listeners have any favorite spoken word songs uh, as well. I, I have just added my own once you were, as soon as I saw that you were talking about spoken word. It, it is my favorite spoken word song of all time, uh, yeah. mostly appropriate for the holidays. And it is deliver, delivered exactly as you would expect it to be by William Shatner. And it's Good King <laughs> Wenceslas. And it is, it is a joy. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. How could we have forgotten William Shatner? I mean, yes. his spoken word presentation of Rocket Man is is famous, of course. It, I am it, not familiar with Good King Wenceslas. It so is nowhere near as good out. as Good King Wenceslas. Uh, this is the <laughs> finest. This is this is the jewel in the crown of the Shatner spoken word. Au revoir. <laughs> when William Shatner does a spoken word song, it is forever his. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's enough. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's all I've got this week. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Closing shout outs. Over at Patreon, we've got Thomas Pedro. I don't know if it's George or Jorge. I've, I've heard Probably it pronounced Jorge. both. Yeah, I'm going with Jorge. James and Jocelyn. And we've also got Jared who wrote a message. Brian, I watched Thor Love and Thunder the whole way through as well. That movie was the biggest dumpster fire I've ever seen. <laughs> I only kept watching it just to see how bad it could get. I was laughing the entire time because just when I thought it couldn't get worse, it would. Oh, I'm right there with you, Jared. I I couldn't. It was a train wreck I couldn't take my eyes away from. And the final scene was just like the piece de resistance. It was amazing. Now I'm 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 curious now. Now I kind of want to watch it just it's to see how bad it, it is. It is so fucking horrible. I I mean I know you don't <laughs> drink anymore, Jason. Get yourself some near beers. Uh, yeah. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. With your uh, weapon of choice, whatever it may be these days, and and just watch watch the tragedy unfold. It's unbelievable. Lagunitas hop. It's the best. All right. Over at PayPal, we've got Ralph, Mark, Miles, Sherry, Linda, and Natalie. Thank you all so much. And over at the tip jar, we've got Theodore and Andrew and Jeff. Thank you all so much. And no reviews this week. No reviews this week. Oh, well. But a big happy birthday to friend of the show, MXV, and I'm very glad you're still around, brother. Me too. We've lost enough people, including far too young Angela Lansbury. Yep. Good run at 96. 96. I mean, she was in everything, everything ever. And I've got to say, I still, uh, her show was great. Murder, She Wrote. I loved that thing when I was a kid. Uh, I would Mm -hmm. watch it with my grandma. Great show. Great show. Great show. Mm -hmm. Uh, My favorite thing she did was Sweeney Todd uh, from 1982. She was awesome. That would not be the Johnny Depp version. No, this was the 1982 version. This would be the good version. Um, it's hard to find, but I found a link to someone who has pieced it together on YouTube. So if you want to go watch it <laughs> on YouTube in, uh, you know, stops and starts, it's pretty good. There's only a couple okay. good, like, great songs in there, but uh, I, I, it, was, it was fantastic. I've got to say uh, her voice rings around a lot recently because Beauty and the Beast. We're going through the Disney movies with a kid right now. Oh. Beauty and the Beast is uh, in full right now. So it's great to hear her voice. Uh, she will, I guess, be missed, but she'll live forever because she was, again, in everything. Everything. She'll always be yep. around. So <laughs> until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. And I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. 
If you enjoy the show, visit GOG.show slash donate to help keep the lights on and we'll love you forever. You can also help us out by sharing the show with your friends and enemies. It's easy and absolutely free. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 574. From there, you can find links to everything we talked about in this episode, as well as links to our swag and Discord channel if you want to buy some stuff or chat with us and other show fans. You can also head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a snarky review and preferably five stars. Stay grumpy. ¿Te preocupas por tu familia? Entonces, ¿por qué darle solo huevos ordinarios cuando pueden disfrutar de lo mejor? Egglands Best, los únicos huevos con ese delicioso sabor fresco de granja, además de la mejor nutrición, como 6 veces más vitamina D, 10 veces más vitamina E y 25% menos de grasa saturada que los huevos regulares, además de muchos otros nutrientes importantes. Así que, dales los mejores huevos. Egglands Best, mejor sabor, mejor nutrición, mejores huevos.